So for the past few weeks, we've been talking about uh, LifeBridge Christian Church and what kind of church it is. We started out by saying that LifeBridge is a church with a mission to empower one more to walk together with God. And then the next week, we asked the question, what does that look like? What does it look like to walk with God, to walk together with each other uh, with God? And we looked at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and started to put the picture together that God gives us from Scripture, and we called it a garden walk. Then last week, we said that might be great as an ideal picture, but we're not there. Uh, we're all in process. We're figuring that out. We're seeing it for the first time, and we're, we want to move in that direction. Does God allow for that and give us a way to do that? And the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, God gives us the path of life. And so we walked through uh, that path and saw that all we need to do is to draw near to God, and God provides all that we need to do that through Jesus. And then we can walk with God, which God gives us the Holy Spirit to do, uh, to walk with God. And so um, now, uh, as, we're, as we're backing up and looking at LifeBridge again, the, the last thing that we want to talk about this week is what can we expect when we come to LifeBridge? What can we expect when we meet the people? Because the building is not the church, the people are the church. And so, what does it mean to be the people of God? That's what we're focusing on this week. You know, when people come to a, a building uh, in order to go to a worship service or a Bible study or to serve in ministry, um, that doesn't mean that they are a Christian or that they are uh, somebody who is walking with God. Uh, it's it's no different than, you know, if I go walk into my garage, that doesn't make me a car. You go walk into a Christian church, that doesn't make you a Christian. Uh, it just means that you walked into the building. And so, uh, just because people are there and participating does not mean that they are necessarily um, Christians. It doesn't mean that they are necessarily a part of LifeBridge Christian Church uh, as a, a local church body. Uh, it just means that they showed up in the building for some reason. Uh, I want you to think about that and talk about that a little bit. What do you think about that thought, that just because somebody shows up in a building together, uh, that doesn't mean that they are uh, the people of God? Uh, do you agree with that? Disagree with that? Uh, talk about that with your group. And you can read the scriptures there that go along with that as well. Uh, that scripture is reminding us that... Uh, that uh, regularly there are audiences of people that are not following Christ who would gather around Christ, or in this case, would gather together uh, on the day of Pentecost. And when they do, we have a message to share with them so that they can become the people of God. Anyway, talk about that question. And when you're ready to dive into the rest of the scriptures, you can press play to continue. Brothers, what shall we do? Uh, the people were convicted on that day of Pentecost when Peter said, Repent and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you too will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that promise he made to them that day is the same promise that's available to us. And when we come home to God through Jesus, so we come home to the Father through the Son, we go down into the waters of baptism to wash our sins away. What happens is a, a transformation. We become the people of God. Uh, we become men and women who are now together with God, and we can walk with God. We're given the Holy Spirit so that we can walk with God. But there's another term that is used to describe us at that moment when we come out of the water, and it is not saved, uh, although that is a, a, a a true statement about us when we come out of the water. Uh, it's not reconciled, although that is a true statement. Uh, it is not um, empowered with the Holy Spirit, although that is a true statement, or forgiven, although that is a true statement. 
All of those things are true. But there's another term that is not as, um, well, <laughs> it's not as fun to think about. Uh, and that is the word infant. When we come out of the water, we're considered baby Christians, just getting started. Uh, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, but we don't know what to do with that. We're forgiven, and so we're celebrating that, but we don't know what to do with the old habits and the old mindset and the stuff that's still in our brain and in our hearts. So what we need to do is to grow up. But when we first come out of the water, we are considered, as Scripture describes us, infants, babies. And so uh, I want you to read that, that passage there, and then I, I'd like for you to talk about this. What would happen if uh, physically, if a, a baby just stayed a baby? Um, what would it look like if they just stayed as an infant and they never grew up? And then take that and, and move that over to a spiritual conversation. Uh, what would happen if in the church people would go get saved, go down to the waters of baptism, but then never grow up? What would that look like? Uh, think about that. Talk about that a little bit as you read those passages. And when you're ready to go on past infancy, you can press play to continue. Well, of course, we're not supposed to stay infants. We are supposed to grow up. And not just physically, like we do in, in the, the physical world, but we're supposed to grow up spiritually. Uh, that means grow in our relationship with God grow in our relationship with people so that we love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. We, we grow in uh, that capacity. We grow in, that, in those relationships. We grow more mature, uh, but that takes time. And it also takes very purposeful effort on our part. Uh, infants just cry and expect to be fed, but Someone who is maturing uh, does like a, a young child does and tries to uh, grab the food, grab the utensils. Uh, I loved it watching with my kids when they would learn how to use a spoon. Um, it was very awkward at first and it took them some work uh, and, and lots of food got spilled all over the tray and on the food, on the floor and so forth. But they did it. They wanted to learn how to eat and feed themselves. And, and the same is true in our walk with God. Uh, we should be craving that, that independence, that, that desire to read the scriptures and to learn them for ourselves and to put that into ourselves so that we can grow up. Well, there are other signs as well. And I, what I want you to do is to read this passage uh, and, and talk about how you can tell when somebody is growing, especially spiritually. And, and uh, what are the signs that there is growth there? And uh, how about for you? Are you growing spiritually, growing in your walk with God, in your relationship with people? Talk about that with your group. And when you're ready to continue on to the next level of maturity, press play to continue. You know, there's a point in our walk with God where we start to realize that it's not just about me and God. Um, there's more to this. Uh, God wants us to be in relationship with other people, and God wants us to be an influence for good, wants us to be peacemakers, wants us to help other people who haven't found God yet and, and uh, help them to find God. It might be as simple as inviting them to a church service or to a Bible study that you're going to, uh, or to serve alongside of you in ministry. But what you find is that as people mature in their walk with God, they, uh, they start to care about helping others. And the way Jesus teaches us to help others is by serving them. Uh, now, we don't serve them by giving them anything that they want or that they ask for. We serve them by giving them what God tells us to give them. Uh, and so we do things like feeding the hungry and housing the homeless and clothing the naked and, uh, and, and caring for the physical needs of people. 
But as we do that, we let them know that that we're doing that because that is what God has called us to do. See, all of those actions are actions that that serve people and bring them closer to God because they see God working through us. Well, anyway, uh, I give you some passages there, and uh, <clears throat> what I'd like for you to do is to just think about how how do you recognize when somebody is a servant in the church, someone who serves Jesus uh, by serving other people? Uh, and there are some passages there that, that give us a, a, a better picture. This isn't somebody who is just really good at making coffee or cleaning tables or uh, running a camera or something, or even singing or being on stage. This is talking about somebody who has matured in their faith to the point that they are walking with God in a pretty solid way, and they want to help others to experience what they're now experiencing. Uh, so read those passages. I'll give you some extra ones you can look up as well and uh, talk about that. Uh, how do you recognize a servant of Jesus? And, uh, and then think about specific people. Who do you know? Name them by name. Write it down on your piece of paper. Who do you know that are that kind of servant? The kinds of, of servants that you see described in those passages. Uh, that's a good process to go through. As you, uh, as you kind of wrap that up, there is one more section and so I want to encourage you to, to not stop here. Go on to the next section uh, after you're done with this discussion and writing these things down. Uh, and then we can finish up our time together. Well, the last group of people that I want to call your attention to that you'll see at LifeBridge and really any church is a group of people that uh, are referred to in Scripture as shepherds. Um, the, the term is coming from a shepherd that cares for a flock of sheep, and uh, that metaphor carries over into the church. Jesus is the great shepherd, and he uh, empowered people and encouraged them and taught them how to be shepherds of people as well, uh, so that they could uh, do that as Jesus did. Shepherds are, are folks that are even more mature. Um, further along in their walk. Uh, they are more rock solid. It takes a lot more to shake them. Uh, it's pretty hard to knock them off the path. And they are very much focused on and committed to praying and uh, planting the Word of God, uh, building people up, caring for their physical needs, but really their spiritual needs making sure that uh, they don't go too far astray, going out and pulling them back in if they're going astray. These shepherds are, uh, are folks that um, really have a, a, a calmness and a joy to them that um, we end up wanting to have for ourselves. Uh, these are the people we turn to for uh, counsel. These are the people that we turn to for teaching from the scriptures. These are the people that we know are, uh, well, they're kind of uh, weathered. Uh, there's some torn and some tattered to them, um, but really healing that has been there so that you know that, that through it all, uh, they ended up with God. And because of that, we turn to them so that we can, through it all, end up with God as well. Uh, I'd like for you to read these passages, and uh, you don't have to write down all of the things that uh, you can see as a recognition about the shepherds, or you can if you want, but I give you some passages that start to, to give you a picture of what these folks look like, and then I would like for you to do the same thing. Do you have people that God has put in your life, even just one person that God has put in your life that is a shepherd for you? someone who protects you from the enemy, who points you to uh, green pastures where you can feed on the Word of God, where you can draw near to God, and you know you are doing it in safety. Um, 
someone who cares about you uh, and knows you by name. Uh, write down the name of that person or those people. And if you don't have that, um, can I encourage you to look for that? Uh, it, this is a video for LifeBridge, so look for that at LifeBridge. Uh, people that match that description that you can turn to and that you can trust to shepherd you uh, and to care for you as you grow in your walk with God. And then I'm going to ask you to do something. Pray for those people or for that person. Uh, if they're shepherding you, I can tell you for sure they're already praying for you. Know that uh, this is a picture of the people of God. You're going to have everything from uh, infants to shepherds that are going to be a part of LifeBridge Christian Church. In fact, that's going to be the case of Christ's Church anywhere you go, any building you enter, whether you worship in a building or outside. Uh, you're going to find that there are going to be people that are all over the scale, and all of them are uh, home with the Father because of the Son and have the power of the Holy Spirit, but they are all in different places in their walk together with God. Uh, I hope that this picture is helping you to see church, what it is, and what it can be, what God wants us all to be as the people of God. God bless.